Hi guys, I'm Joe Hildreth and welcome to My Heat. So this is episode 6 of the YouTube Shop Student. And uh, in this video I'm going to carry on with the back plates, but there's a few things that I want to talk about from the last episode. Uh, a couple things that were pointed out to me and some things that I learned and that sort of thing. So um, the first thing that I wanted to point out was, um, and it was pointed out to me several times, is that uh, when I was doing the cutoff of the ring that I made, my parting tool was sticking uh, too far out, right? Which caused some additional chatter and vibration, and I uh, wasn't using any uh, um, uh, cutoff lubricant. So um, I should have known better on both. Um, the uh, I had done a test cut on the piece of two-inch material and had adjusted the blade out to uh, just a hair over uh, the radius of the material so that I can get all the way through it. Um, and when I went to uh, cut the ring off, which was only you know a quarter inch uh, thick, I forgot to adjust the um, the uh, cutoff blade uh, back. So that was uh, my error. As far as uh, lubricant, I did think about lubricant. I do. Uh, I, I've got some kerosene out in my shop. I'm in the basement of my house, and I just did not want to uh, stink up the whole basement with uh, kerosene. You guys know how strong that's as uh, bad as uh, uh, getting diesel out and playing with it. So. Um, but uh, someone did point out to me that uh, WD-40 makes a good cutoff lubricant. Doesn't smell so bad, so I'll make sure I get a couple cans of that uh, the next time I'm out and about the Wally World or wherever I can get it. Um, two other things. Uh, these are from users that pointed out to me, and I thought it really pretty good because I didn't necessarily think about it. Uh, the first was from Jeremy Gagnon. And... Uh, he uh, pointed out that the uh, thickness, the overall thickness of uh, the back plate that I was going to turn for the uh, uh, three-jaw chuck, um, even after I turned off the um, uh, the shoulder in the back, there would be plenty. There would still be you know half inch or so of thread sticking out of the front. So he said, why not just screw it on the proper way and bore it out, bore the front of the. Um, Played out uh, the you know counterbore it so they can turn it around, spin it on the uh, spindle the other way, and that way you don't have any additional inaccuracies introduced by the uh, spindle um, washer that I made, the spindle washer that I made, and uh, you know that's a good idea, and I'm going to try that. Uh, however, um, Dan Bentler uh, also wanted to remind me that hey, uh, keep in mind the space that you have between the back of the back plate and the um, reverse gear tumbler lever uh, you know the little ball on the end of that and make sure that it clears so you know you may be able to take some off but you may not be able to take off all that you want just keep an eye on that clearance so uh, Jeremy and uh, Dan thank you so much uh, for your uh, suggestions uh, so I'm gonna try uh, Jeremy's um, approach uh, I did make this ring and have it right here and the ring turned out pretty good it's a nice close fit on the spindle uh, it's right at a quarter inch thick there's a slight variance of about um, three quarters of an inch to a thousandth of an inch uh, when I measure around it so it's not it's not perfectly parallel but now having said that I don't think it really matters that it's perfect uh, because once the uh, hub is face down and the chuck is turned around or the chuck back plate is turned around and faced up against the spindle then uh, the the front face of the chuck back plate that actually holds the chuck would be turned true to the spindle itself so um, again I don't think that uh, this being super accurate matters but I did want to try to get it as accurate as I could and this is the first part like this that I've ever tried to make and you know to be within a thousandth of an inch uh, overall um, I consider that a success uh, for me. So, but look, I'm open to suggestions. You guys seen how I set this piece in the chuck? Um, maybe I drove it a little too hard with uh, uh, the, the aluminum stock that I drove it up against the parallels with, or something. So, anyway, I'm open. I'm open for suggestions. If you guys got any room for improvement, constructive criticism, I'm perfectly okay with. Okay, so I'm gonna reset the camera and show you uh, my setup and how I'm going to bore the front of this uh, chuck plate uh, to an inch and a half um, and we'll go from there. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, I've tried to get everything here in frame so it just barely fits. Uh, something else that I wanted to point out, uh, when I was boring the uh, washer uh, to go on the spindle, 
um, I had a different boring bar in here and it stuck out quite a bit further so um, I'm only boring in a quarter of an inch and I have um, uh, found a, a shorter boring bar that I can mount in my tool holder so to try to keep this a little bit more rigid. The other thing is here I have my carriage stop here. What I've done was I set my tool up against the face of the uh, back plate <clears throat> at the angle that I wanted, locked it down, and then locked the carriage and then set my um, carriage stop using a quarter inch uh, piece of high speed steel as a gauge between the uh, the end of the stop here and my carriage saddle casting uh, to set my depth so and then I locked it into place so let me get the camera set up and we'll start boring this out okay so I have the boring bar set up here hopefully you can see it um, I don't have a GoPro or a small camera like that so I actually have a kind of a large-ish um, camcorder set up on a tripod so hopefully you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take cuts in here until I get close to the uh, the thread being knocked off and then I'll start measuring and go from there. So let's get started. Okay I'm going to keep uh, taking passes like that uh, until I get down to a pass or two left. Something I want to point out is, uh, and I know my arm's in the way, is I thought this was a cast iron backing plate, but it is not. So I'm just not leaving any uh, nasty brown anythings on me. So anyway, when I get down a little closer, um, I'll bring you back. Okay, this should be my last pass. Okay, that should be pretty close, so I want to pull this off and see if we can spin it up there backwards. Okay, let's see where we're at with it here. Okay, it's a little snug the plate, so I think that'll work. Okay, so let me um, get my facing tool out here and and um, uh, get it set up here, and we'll start facing this hub down. So I'll bring you back here when I got set up. Okay, so I have my um, uh, tool that I'm going to use to face the soft set up, and so I'm going to get a quick measurement here. I realize that this is probably not the best way to measure, but I'm going down to the thread there and see what we got. So I'm reading uh, 561. So I'm going to get another measurement on there. <clears throat> I can see where I can get some variance here. So, you know what? Let me stick a ruler in there. Let me find a ruler and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Hey, I uh, I hate to admit this, but um, you know, I don't have any scales. So, uh, I robbed the one out of my, uh, uh, my set square. So, I'm going to use it. So, I'm going to have to uh, make a note to myself that I'm going to buy some scales. So, so currently up to the thread, it's uh, about nine sixteenths, and I want it to be a quarter inch. So, looks like I need to take off about five sixteenths. So, let me uh, let me get started here, and I think what I want to do, just so that everything is faced nice and square, is I'll lock my carriage. And I know this is a newbie thing, and and I know that I have my uh, my uh, compound is set at uh, 
90 degrees instead of uh, 30 but this way I can sort of feed in and know how much I need to take off so anyway this needs to come down uh, 9 sixteenths of an inch so let me get started here and see what we can get of course it might help to uh, engage the lathe belt all right yeah I think I'm gonna feed in this way I think I'm taking too much of a cut there. No, all right. Let me pause and see what I've got going on here and I'll bring you right back. Okay guys, I'm back. I was taking uh, too much of a bite, so I'm gonna take a few passes here. Okay, you guys get the idea. I'm going to keep whittling this away until it's uh, pretty close uh, to a quarter inch and I only have a couple passes left and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've taken several cuts here. So I'm going to measure. I'm getting close. So let's see. So I'm about right at 5 16 inch deep there. I'm going to spin this around a couple times. Find the beginning of the thread. And I am, okay, so I am just shy of five, six, so I'm going to take two more cuts. I want to take a 10 and a 5 and auto feed, and uh, hopefully um, that'll get us pretty close and we'll measure again. And I'm going to take five this time. I want to sneak up on this guys because you know I'm uh, doing some crude measuring. Alright. Alright let's get a measurement. So my ruler's graduated in uh, 16th, 64th, um, 8th, and 30 seconds. So I'm looking for 8.30 seconds. And let's see where we're at here. Okay, I'm about a 30 second over, so that's about 30 thousandths. So I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to take two more passes, another pass at 10 and another pass at 5, and then I'm going to try it. I'm going to turn it around and try it. So let's see what happens. Okay, let's take another measurement. Now what I'm looking for is just a hair over a quarter inch, just a hair. And that looks to be about right where I want it, at least according to my rule. So I'm going to take uh, one more spring pass without making any adjustment to the tool, just to see if it knocks anything off. Okay, so I think that's that, and I do need to knock these corners off. But I think before I do that, I'm just going to do a trial fit. Now, um, my chips are uh, 
nice, uh, very light straw. So I think my, you know, was on average I was taking a 25 thousandths depth of cut, and uh, and uh, that, that was, felt pretty good. So let's see what we have here. All right, and it seats, and I got plenty of room. Okay, so um, I'm going to take this back off and chamfer those edges like I should so I don't get cut on them. All right. So let me turn this tool here. chamfer this inside. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I hope you can see it there. Now let me get the outside. I'm going to have to use a different tool for that. Let me wind this around. Guess what? My uh, stop is in the way. So let me uh, let me remove it real quick. Sorry about the delay, guys. Okay, got the stop off. All right, I believe that did it. Both ends are chamfered. It feels good. So, we'll flip it back around. Okay. Uh, before I uh, before I mount this on, I'm going to clean these threads off and everything real good, and then we'll come back. So I'll see you in just a minute. Okay guys, I have uh, cleaned the spindle nose real well and I cleaned the back plate threads. So there's a, uh, hopefully you can see that's faced off and it's just a hair over a quarter inch. Uh, without better measuring tools, I don't want to try to take off anymore. And I have uh, knocked these corners off. So this is ready to go back onto the spindle. And what I'm gonna do here is put the spindle in back gear like that and so already I can see I got a lot more thread engagement than I had before all right so there it is now let me uh, let me reset the camera and get my chuck out and uh, let's talk about this here for just a second okay guys so here's the uh, three jaw chuck that I bought from uh, CD Co tools it is Chinese chuck uh, we'll need to probably disassemble it and clean it um, but it did come with jaws come with key and mounting hardware so um, turning the back plate for this jaw will be identical to turning the back plate for the four jaw 
I'll measure this recess. I'll cut the uh, step down here so that it uh, is the same size as the recess and uh, face off back here. I was going to do this all in one video, but look, uh, this is getting kind of long, even though there's a few parts that I'm going to speed up so as not to kill you guys. I am a... Uh, I am new to this hobby, right? So um, I'm sure that I made mistakes and I'm counting on you guys to point out things that I could have done better, safer, or whatnot. Another thing uh, a user pointed out to me uh, in my last video, my, micro uh, my microphone wire was kind of hanging out and at least from the angle of the video, it looked like it was really perilously close to the, uh, the chuck, but it really wasn't. So uh, this time I made sure to coil the thing up and keep it out of the way just to be safe. Um, so again, if you guys got some suggestion, uh, some, some constructive criticism, I'm all for that. I am going to pull this, uh, chuck apart. I'll do that off camera. I mean, everybody's seen these things come apart and I don't think I need to share that even as a newbie. Um, if somebody wants to see it come apart, l let me know in the next couple days, uh, after this video is posted and I'll, I'll, I'll video that if somebody wants to see it. But like I said, I think everybody's seeing that sort of stuff happen so um i want to i'm going to call it quits here uh, i feel pretty good um about uh, the the back stub of this uh, uh back plate being turned down it uh fits on there well uh there might be you know i might be able to take another 30 second of an inch off of it but i'm not going to do that i'm collecting a whole lot more threads i don't know if you can see in there um you know, I still got a half inch of space in here, so um, my my user, I think it was Jeremy, um, suggested that I just turn around, counterbore this, stick it on there, and just do it. And that was a great idea. I don't know that I can do that when I go to um, uh, redo the uh, back plate of the uh, four jaw. I just want to uh, reduce that hub a little bit too, but I won't. I won't do that on camera. I'm, I'm sure you guys are sick and tired of seeing. Um, uh, me turning down um, or making chips uh, just to mount chucks but you know uh, I'm new and and uh, and I'm, I'm having fun guys this has been great one thing I was surprised that you know this is not a cast iron this is steel and uh, the chips that uh, I was uh, cutting off here uh, I don't know if you can see that uh, maybe maybe not have a nice light straw color and it was a 25,000 stuff to cut so I felt like that was pretty good um, I don't know what happened there earlier. <coughs> Excuse me. What, um, when I was feeding the tool in, although uh, I do think that I chipped the carbide, so I'm not real sure. I'll have to take a look at that. But I got some more, and and I'm getting to the point where uh, you know I really need to grind some high speed steel because I need to practice and and uh, uh, and that sort of thing. So anyway, I'm going to cut it off here, uh, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your patience with me and. And uh, if these uh, videos have been entertaining or helpful, please like and subscribe and share. Uh, that helps me out or maybe you will help me out in the long run trying to get my 1,000 subscribers. If I get there, great. If I never get there, well, that's that's okay too. Uh, but anyway, um, thanks for watching and, and uh, uh, remember to be safe in the shop. And other than that, have a blessed day.